Hi, and uh, welcome back to Frank and Mary here in Ashland. This is the fall edition. Uh, if you haven't, don't know me, my name is Arthur Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, where I do nothing but elder law. But this is not about elder law. This is about Frank, my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to the Senior Center, I've done, I've done a lot of presentations. Frank and Mary, whom I always use as my example, they're the people who want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's, and if you're identify with Frank and Mary, then this, is, this show is for you because the point of the show is to help you and Frank and Mary know the people you need to know and the, and the programs you need to know about in order to do exactly that, stay right there. Now, uh, some folks know me, it seems like everybody knows my co-host, Steve Mitchell, whom I had convinced to do this show a couple of years ago and we've been doing it ever since. Um, Steve, welcome back. It's Thank you, uh, good, good to be back, good to see you certainly. And uh, you know, it's been a little while, we took a little hiatus over the summer and uh, which was good. I mean, it was a, it was a wet, hot summer, but now we're back. Uh, it uh, actually, the date today is September the 22nd. So we're resetting our show and uh, and, and as we've discussed, Art, we're moving into a monthly format rather than the, the bi-weekly format. Right, right. Because we had done that. We had switched to the bi-weekly specifically during COVID because we realized that things were changing so often um, that we, this, and that so, so many seniors use cable, even though they may not be you know, otherwise plugged into the internet and all that jazz, that it might be really helpful for folks. And I think it was, you know, but I think, you know, we're, I don't want to say COVID's over, God forbid, you know, but but it, it is it not it, it, at least things aren't changing the way they were constantly changing before, you know. Right. So I, normally we have a, a a guest on our show. Uh, today it's just you and I uh, going to talk about uh, you know what's going on in Ashland currently. Uh, but I do want to recommend, since you've mentioned COVID, that. Uh, on our next show, we bring bring back uh, Sergeant Ed Berman to kind of give us a, an update as to where we are with COVID, what's going on in town. You know, we're talking about booster shots now. Uh, what's going to happen? Uh, where where the where's the access for booster shots, uh, flu shots, uh, testing, and all of those things that uh, I think uh, need to be updated at this point. And I, and I think. When we were talking, Steve, that, I think that brings up a good point. We were kind of talking about, I, I had asked you about kind of, you know, starting off by really giving folks a summary of kind of what, what has happened in, in Ashland over the summer, right? And what may be happening soon. And I think what you just gave is a great example. I think one of the, one of the questions for a lot of people is, is kind of going forward, how do they deal with this ongoing you know, I don't want to say off again, on again, COVID situation, but certainly with possible changes. And so to have Mr. Berman on would be, I think would be terrific, you know, and I think, and I think he also was Ill, really illustrated what was great about the Ashland's response, that it was very coordinated and you had a, you know, you had a great person who was really focused on this stuff, you know, which was, that was terrific. We're fortunate to have Ed in, in that role, and he's been instrumental in a number of regional activities that have been coordinated to, uh, during uh, you know, the COVID, COVID process. It's interesting, we had a, a select board meeting last night, and uh, one of the things that we talked about was that a testing facility uh, may be coming to Ashland, and uh, oh. we have... You know, currently, the, the commuter rail parking lots are very much underutilized. So one of them may be, uh, it's being investigated right now, explored to become a drive-through testing site, similar to what we've seen in, in the Framingham area. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things we discussed. But this, you know, this is a very fluid, dynamic situation, as you mentioned, Art, with with the booster shots, with the different variations of, of, of uh, the vaccines, you know, uh, the uh, standard flu shot that we get every year and on and on. So uh, we'll have uh, Sergeant Ed on at our next program and uh, we'll get a real good update. 
That's ter that's terrific. So can you can you just talk a little bit, of, Steve, about? Well, I think really I think it would be helpful for folks to hear kind of about two things. First, kind of it, it, as far as in your role as a selectman, um, kind of what what you know what happened immediately over the last three months, because typically what, I, what I'd ask you to do at the end of shows was just kind of talk about, well, what's just been happening and what's about to happen. And then I'd be interested if you could kind of reflect on now, because now as we're thinking about that world of COVID, it's kind of changed now. And, and, and we're thinking about that strange time on how that worked out as far as you were concerned personally and as far as the government is concerned. Like I, I was thinking as far as the government, I remember really early on, one of the things we were talking about was the sense of impending doom regarding your budgets. That, you know, the budgets were just going to collapse and the tax rates were going to need to go up, you know, and, 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 th but there were a whole bunch of things there, were, you know, and other stuff was getting deferred. You know, I know, I know that for, for, in a lot of places, you know, a lot of the bond issues got deferred, you know, because the people were concerned. So if you could just kind of talk about that and then about your own experience. I mean, one of the, one of the joys of having you as my co-host is you're a senior. So, well, you, so you kind of get it. You know, in terms of identifying with the issues that that you know that certainly I've gone through, and that you know all my clients, I have no clients. I just had a guy ask me if I could do some estate planning for him. I said, "Are you 55 yet?" I said, "I don't have any clients under 55." <laughs> and I had another person. Still, people ask me when I'm talking to them. I say, "Well, do you give a senior discount?" I said, "Well, no. You know, all of my clients are seniors. There's no discount." But but so if you could just talk about that, the you know that from the selectman's perspective, from the government's perspective, you kind of what happened and what's kind of coming up, you know, and then from your own perspective, I think it'd be a, it'd be a, a, of interest to people. Well, let me get myself out of the way first. I'm not I don't really enjoy talking about myself. So but I will say, uh, since you pointed out that I am a senior, I just recently celebrated my 72nd birthday and my 50th wedding anniversary. So that's, wow. kind of, you know, wow. in the last month. So, you know, that's, that's Steve in a nutshell right now, but let's, yeah. talk, let's talk more about what's going on in town. Let's reflect a little bit back uh, when COVID, when we first were confronted with, with the issues of COVID. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we were all thrust in a situation where we were, and, and I don't want to use the term, you know, left on our own to decide our own fates. But, you know, I think everybody, every layer of government was struggling to accommodate this and to work through this. And, you know, I think uh, in retrospect, I think we've, we've, Ashland did a particularly good job of coordinating the programs and services that we needed to accomplish, not just with the with the uh, uh, quarantining and the testing and, and, and the vaccinations and so on, but also the support for, you know, the business community, several programs, the support for those folks that were in need for whatever reason uh, occurred, whether it was for uh, uh, being furloughed from work, being out of work, uh, and so on. So I think we did a particularly good job with that coordinating, and it still continues to this day because I don't think those challenges really have gone away for, for many people, and particularly for seniors. And the fact that they were, they've been many, in many cases, isolated for quite a, quite a period of time. So, you know, I think uh, in retrospect, in terms of the budget, you know, no one knew what was going to happen with with budgets in, in at that point in time. Fortunately, Ashland, over the past 10 years, we've made a concerted effort of of creating, maintaining and building a rainy day fund so that we were able to draw a portion of that and, and use it to, to balance our budget and to maintain those programs and services in, in town government, but also in the school system as well. So we've been fortunate in, in that regard. Um, you know, one of the things we, we talk, we've been talking about on the select board for, for months now is ARPA funds, the American Rescue uh, Plan Act. The ARPA funds are an injection of, of dollars into the states and also into, into local communities. So one of the discussions we're having is what do we use 
ARPA funds for. And right now we're kind of in this public comment period where we want the public, uh, we want residents to uh, tell us what, what do you think we should spend money on in town? This is kind of a one-shot injection. And, and we're talking a considerable amount of money. So do we want sidewalks? Do we want uh, road repair? Do we want, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it's an endless list. So, you know, one of the things we've talked about as an example is the lack of a sidewalk that goes from the community center down towards downtown. And that has always been kind of a priority. And that may be uh, something that we can accomplish relatively soon during this ARPA process. So, you know, it's those are the kinds of things that we've, we're, we're now, um, I think, coming to, we're, we're, we're at a point where we're not, uh, we're not thinking just COVID, we're thinking about, you know, the, the, the post-COVID world, right? right. And, uh, you know, so what's happening at the community center, uh, and, or as most people call it, the, the senior center, uh, is, you know, the life is starting to come back, you know, the programs and the services, the exercise programs and the card games are starting to come back. Uh, you know, the programming staff, the support staff are actively engaged. The, the community center is open. Uh, for the, all through the pandemic, we've hosted, uh, actually through the Friends of the Council on Aging, they've helped to fund a, a Monday senior lunch program. And initially, it was just a grab and go program. Now it's, it's morphed into a hybrid. There's a a collection of folks that come into the community center and have their lunch. And there's a group that grab and go, continue to grab and go. So we're starting to see that the Ashland Lions have, have started back their, their once a month uh, Thursday, first Thursday of the month uh, breakfast program. So, you know, we're starting to come back into more normal lives now. And, uh, but still it's under this umbrella of, of COVID and, and you know, well, it's, it's evolving. So Steve, uh, Steve, when you talk about the ARBA funds, it certainly sounds like from the way you're talking, talking that the, that the funds, that the use of the funds isn't COVID, doesn't have to be COVID related, right? Well, but there are, yeah, there are restrictions. There's, there's, uh, you know, parameters and so on. There's timeframes. There are, you know, so there are conditions, but uh, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be used for what I would say direct COVID related purposes. I mean, right. we're right. using it to stimulate, to stimulate the, basically the economy is what they're, what it's being used for. Right. So, so is there a, is there a deadline by which those funds have to be uh, allocated or spent? And, yeah. and in terms of, public input to that process. Can you just speak to folks about how you're, in, in, you're imagining that would work? And, and do the fund, does the funds allocation all, all simply happen through a vote of the Board of Selectmen? Or does it, is this going to require some kind of town meeting action either in the fall or in the, in the spring? No, uh, well, a couple different questions there are. So number one, uh, as I said, there are, con there are conditions. Um, there's the, there are uh, things you can use it for, things you cannot use it for. Timeframes are out for several years. So we're talking about oh. into 20, 2024, 2025. So we have time frame here to make a determination and then to implement. Uh, in terms of the public process, we are asking residents to uh, let us know what you particularly are interested in. They can communicate with me directly uh, through an email, smitchell at ashlandmass.com or through the select board at ashlandmass.com. That's, that's a good way to communicate. So, so that's, uh, um, so we will, in terms of how we determine and how we prioritize uh, I think it's going to be really based on this public input that we get, and yeah. it's a select board that will make a, make decisions in regard to this. But we're not, you know, the intent is not to be isolated in, in a vacuum. We want to know 
what people uh, want to see, what kind of, uh, whether it's infrastructure or whatever it might be. I see. And, and in terms, and if the funds are, are being, can be spent over several years, that's terrific. Yeah. Um, and, and are the funds, but at the, are the funds at this point, like all in the bank or all available? Or are they only coming in during, or are they coming in in chunks during that several year period? My understanding is that it's not in the bank yet, but they will come in, in it as a lump. And checks, so, in, checks in the mail, the check is in the that mail. That type, okay. type of thing, right? You, you, you know, we're dealing with the federal government at this point. So, uh, but, uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, certainly uh, I think uh, it's going to be an important component in, in um, really uh, improving a lot of the infrastructure in town, I think, or has the potential to do that. And, and, you, and you say it's, it could be, a, it's a substantial sum. Can you give me an order of magnitude of what substantial means in that? You know, talking to the federal government, this, you could be have a lot of zeros in those checks. You know? Well, it, it is now, you know, they're sending these checks all over the country. So, but it is, it is in the millions. So I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave it at that. And then, you know, the state is also receiving ARPA funds that they can now distribute as well. So we may have opportunities to, to derive some benefit from the, from, as it filters down from, from the state as well. So, you know, it's, uh, that's, that's a big opportunity. Uh, so there, but there's a few other things, Art, that I, I, I wanted to bring up that are, I yeah. think are important. Uh, you know, number one, we're, right now we're operating with an interim police chief. Uh, uh, chief Rich Briggs is our, our current interim. And we're going through a process. Now, the town manager hires the police chief so right now we are going through a process of, uh, of creating a process and he's uh, will be hiring a firm that will assist with this process. And one of the important co uh, components is that we, we want to have a public process here. We want the public to be engaged in what, what, what do you wanna see in a police chief? And you know, Ashland is it's a small town where 19,000 people, um, but still, we have our issues and our concerns, but we still have that small town feel. And, you know, I, I can tell you what's important to me in a police chief is certainly uh, the, the importance of, of community policing, engaging with the public and being involved with the public on a regular basis, not just as a, as a, a, a standard police officer resident engagement, but you know, as part of the community with our events and our programs and all of that stuff. So, so that's, that's a big thing. And that we hope to see over the next several months, this, this process of hiring a new police chief. So that's, that's one item that I wanted to bring up. And, and I guess the next item is just an update on the uh, public safety building that's currently under construction. It's, uh, uh, if you have an opportunity to drive by, it is uh, all of the steel has been erected. That is complete, and uh, it's moving along at a pretty rapid pace. It's on track, uh, pretty much on track the way it was scheduled. And uh, we hope to have our grant our grand opening next year at uh, you know some point uh, late summer, early fall. We just had a uh, what what they call a topping off in beam signing ceremony uh, where the, the building committee was able to, uh, to sign the last beam that was put into place. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so it's, uh, but it's moving along uh, pretty quickly. And so we're very pleased about that. That's great. And I know that had been your baby. I remember, I remember our interviewing both the police and the fire chiefs before town meeting happened you know and, right. and, and once again just to keep i think once one of the purposes of the show is to keep really people familiar with kind of what's if there is something big that's going on to give yeah. give seniors especially a chance to kind of see it through and that's but and but i know we, we, it, it's, things were sounding pretty bad in the existing facility so this is a yeah this is a yeah thing. i think uh you know clearly it was a need uh a long-term need um the other thing i just wanted to bring up is is just stress the that the community center, the senior center, is open. Uh, they're 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 providing programs. 
Um, we're getting back into uh, you know some of the lunch programs. Uh, in fact, uh, this I, I'm not sure if this is going to air in time, but we have a senior barbecue sponsored by the select board, the Council on Aging, and the community center. That's scheduled for Monday, uh, September the 27th. And you know, so we're starting to to become more normal. And uh, so we just want to encourage residents to, uh, you know, to reach out uh, if there's an interest, there's lots of programs, lots of services. Art, you've, you've talked about, you know, you know, your services at the community center and, uh, you know, you might want to just touch, touch on that uh, quickly while we're here. I was, and I was just going to say, I'm, 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 I think COVID has, it's taught you a lot. It's taught me a lot, you know, and, and so I've been, I've been, uh, you know, staying in contact with Joanne Duffy and we're looking at, you know, one of the things that we did as I had always had regular um, seminar presentations at the senior center, which, which we stopped during the year or during COVID. Um, but what I did instead, specifically with the, with, with the help of the folks at WACA, uh, is I started pre-recording my presentations every month and they've been going up at WACA every month, which has been really Terrific, and it's it's interesting because I've actually found you know seniors calling who really appreciated that because there end up being more presentations because they're literally every month. So one of the things that I decided for myself that I'm going to keep up is that right. We're going to keep doing presentations every month. Yeah. I talked to Joanne Duffy about when she's she will she would feel comfortable on a month where she where she thinks that that presentation would be of interest to seniors to actually have it live, that in addition to pre-recording, and I'll also bring it in live so that people can ask questions that you know they wouldn't, obviously they wouldn't be able to do if it was just pre-recorded. Um, and that way also we can deal with any concerns that folks had about confidentiality because when I would do them at the, at the, uh, at the senior center live, we'd always have them taped by the folks at WACA. Um, but as a result, you know, some people would occasionally be concerned that, oh, I don't want to be on the, I don't want to be on film and blah, blah, blah. So I think that's going to kind of take care of that. Um, yeah. I, I know that I, and, and, and I, you know, talked to Joanne about, I know we had always, I, for many, for a long time, I had done legal advice at the senior center and that will be coming back shortly. I, I can't recall it, it shortly, right. When we'll be doing that once a month. But I think that one of the things that just as a general observation, Steve, I think one of the things that I really came to appreciate during this time, because I deal with nothing but seniors, was the way that seniors came together all, over all of this, right? And that, and that probably, you know, the great takeaway going forward for seniors, no matter what your health, right? no matter what your abilities, is that as, senior, as seniors, we're kind of all in this together. And you saw so many great instances during COVID of people reaching out in their neighborhood, as you know, as well as volunteering for kind of some townwide stuff, but probably most importantly in their neighborhood for people who were feeling who they knew were just really isolated as a result of all of this, right? Yeah. And I think one of the real uh, challenges is to is to kind of keep reaching out because there are a lot of people still who as a result of this experience are going out less than they went out before COVID. Yeah, I and think so it's to important or to, to uh, that's a great point. I think it's important to acknowledge, you know, the staff at the community center. I'm thinking about, uh, you know, Candy Wilson, who's an outreach coordinator, uh, Jennifer Wolfing, who is a uh, uh, social worker. And, you know, these were busy times for these folks trying to, to uh, uh, you know, make contact and make sure that there was support where, where it was needed. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a core group of very active seniors that spend a lot of time at the community center, but there's a bigger collection, a bigger demographic of, of seniors who don't. And, you know, I think one of, the, one of the challenges we have, and I think one of the points of the show moving forward is try to make that connection and encourage, you know, more, uh, more engagement. Exactly. And I hope that we'll be able to do that moving forward and maybe get some of those folks to come on. Right. So, Steve, thank you very much for doing this. Okay. Folks, thank you very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you very much. Thank you.